Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. And we are in my testing world. We're looking at a mod today. Um, it is called Terrain Mapper. So here's my mod list. So again, in my testing world, I like to take as many things off as possible, except the things we're actually looking at. So Terrain Mapper, the only thing we need for that is Lib Wrapper, which of course it will add itself when you activate this. Ignore the little writing underneath there, because um, that's kind of giving the game away a little bit. Um, I've got Dice So Nice in as well. I don't actually need it, but I tend to leave it on for everything. Whenever there's a dice roll, I like to have Dice So Nice. It's, it's nicer for me, it's nicer for the videos, etc. But we won't be doing any dice rolling in this. All right, so Terrain Mapper, what the heck does it do? Well, it helps you map terrain. Uh, <laughs> I know, <laughs> brilliantly titled mod, sir. Um, so what we've got here, there's just this scene here. I know it's not a particularly great map, but uh, we've got this scene here. Uh, I actually decided that this is not a path. I want this to be a river. Uh, I've got a bit of a cliff here. And I've got an area here that is higher than the rest of the land. And I've decided that this bottom right hand corner here is really difficult terrain to move through. Um, so uh, again, I'm using the D&D &D system, but you can use this for other game systems, absolutely. D&D uh, &D rules are, of course, is that when you are swimming, you move at swimming speed. Difficult terrain, you are... It costs you twice as much movement. Effectively, you're at half speed. Um, if you go up a cliff, you're going to climb and probably need an athletics roll for that, etc., uh, etc. Et and, uh, of course, we've got things about line of sight. Now, I'll tell you what I am going to do that I didn't check before is uh, I'm going to slap a couple of things out there. So uh, I've got... Um, I've got lighting on for the whole scene here, so uh, not really using token vision. Let's move Sorryman around and see what happens as he just traverses this various areas. So this is normal, just walking around, nothing uh, of interest here. But suddenly he's hit an area of difficult terrain. So you saw there was a little pop-up, okay, and it's saying difficult terrain, not difficult terrain, difficult terrain, not difficult terrain. So straight away, it's, uh, it's suggesting that he is in difficult terrain. He's going to move at half speed. Now, it has got a little icon in the top left-hand corner, which is an exclamation mark. So there's a missing icon here to uh, to tell me what's going on. Uh, but obviously, the pop-up is doing that for us. Now, I strongly suspect that if we go to the settings um, and we look, we haven't got any settings. So we can't manually update that. Now, this was originally off the back of Defred's Convenient Effects, so I suspect it's a um, an icon that came with or from that, but I haven't got Defred's installed. I don't need Defred's anymore. So um, I will report that one as just a, a tiny, tiny little issue. Um, maybe they wanted the exclamation mark. Maybe they <laughs> that's a deliberate choice. But anyway, you can see that while we're in difficult terrain, um, it's going to keep that icon on and... Uh, yeah, every time we enter or leave, it's going to tell us whether we have that. So that's really, really useful to be able to do. Now, what happens if we head down here to my so-called river? As soon as we hit one of the squares, that is water. Let me zoom in again. So you can see we've got an icon of a, well, it's a little waterfall icon here. We leave, we enter, we're now swimming. That icon stays on us until we leave the other end, get out the bank, which is really cool. Um, what should we do now? Let's uh, let's see about getting up this cliff, shall we? So as soon as I move on to this cliff, we've got our icon changes to a little mountain thing, and you saw it pop up and say climbing, not climbing, am climbing. And then once we're at the top here, you can see that it's said that actually we're at 20 foot elevation now. So we can do a number of different things with this, obviously. So we can set areas that will designate, oh, by the way, you're swimming now. Uh, we can set areas that designate as rough terrain or difficult terrain. We can set areas as cliffs and we can set areas of different elevation. Now, I could put another area of elevation that's up again that is then 30 foot, 40 foot, etc. So you can set the elevation however you like. Um, I'm just doing this as an example, so I'm now climbing again and I'm back and you can see that it's taken off that um, plus 20 foot up there. 
which is really cool and groovy. So that's what it kind of does. Now you can use it for all sorts of different purposes. Of course you can. You can put stairs in using this. You can put ramps in. Um, lots and lots of different bits. But um, I just wanted to kind of show you the basics so you can understand what this mod can do for you. That's all really cool. So how is this powered? In V12, this is powered by regions. So you can see here, if I move this to the middle, I've created, very usefully, they're nicely coloured, four different regions. One region that I've called River, which is very conveniently it gave itself the blue colour for. A region called Difficult Terrain at the bottom right. A region I called Cliff Top, which is that elevated area. And then this actual climb bit. Now with this cliff, because it's not a huge great big image, if I show you a slight problem, depending where Sorryman chooses to climb up, he may, there we go, so he's going from ground to top and it's not triggering the fact that he's in that cliff and the region, reason for that is this region's not very wide. So he's going from this square here, barely touching that region, to this square here, barely touching that region. So the way I've got this set up, you might have noticed I very specifically moved Sorryman off to the <laughs> to the right hand side and I went up here knowing it would trigger it. So just bear that in mind, You're, it will only trigger, if you've got a very narrow piece of water or a very narrow cliff, it will only trigger if most of the, uh, most of the square is covered by that region when that um, token enters it. So yeah, it's just driven by regions. Let's uh, let's bin all these and show you how to set these up. So first of all, so we've got no regions anymore. They've all gone. All right. So all of that functionality, we're not swimming. We're not in difficult terrain. That's all gone. We want to set this stuff up. So let's just show an example of setting up this river. Now we know that when we want to create regions, we can do it in a couple of different ways. The easiest way is to get it to fill in walls. Okay, uh, and walls is a really good way to define our regions. Now we do have some extra tools on here, but I'll get to those in a moment. Um, we're going to first of all go in and draw our walls. Now it doesn't matter which type of walls we use for this, because you might say, well, just because it's a river, I don't want to block movement into it. I don't want to block sight. I don't want to block sound. Fine, that's okay. So you use whatever walls that you want to for things like this. I'm just going to, and I'm going to do this really roughly just for expedience of the video. I'm not going to follow the bank particularly well. So it won't look great. But I'm just going to box in my area that I'm calling river. See, I told you I wasn't going to do it very well. <laughs> oh, you love it. Uh, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do. Okay, so we've got our boxed in region, just like we do, we've done in other videos for suppressing weather and stuff like that. Now, if we go to our region tools, we have a couple of different ways that we can do this. But to be honest, the easiest way with this mod is we have this fill space enclosed by walls. So rather than having to select the walls, if I click this, it's showing us all of the wall areas and I can just click in that and it's created it. Now I'm gonna call this river just so that I've got it. There we go. So it's created th this region for me. Now, interestingly, it hasn't... Uh, oh, that's interesting. Look what it's done with this wall here. It didn't uh, didn't take into account my mistake. That's a bit bizarre, but there we go. I'm not, <laughs> not going to complain. It's happened to done a better job than I did. Shut up. <laughs> uh, it's done the same over here. Did I have my previous walls on there still? Maybe. But anyway, so you can just fill like that. Now, there is another way you can do it. We have this fill by grid button here, which means we can actually just click on an individual square. I thought it was going to stay on there. Um, and we can do individual squares if we want to, or we can select, I believe. Oh, no, it's only going to do individual square. So that's not quite so useful, but... There we go. If we wanted to add something onto river, we should be able to add it onto river just by clicking like that. Nope, that's not quite working the way I hoped. Um, but to be perfectly honest, um, I'm not sure I would use that tool by those anyway. I'm going to do it by walls. Uh, somebody else is going to say, I use this all the time and this is the mistake you've made. Uh, like with all my videos, 
read the comments because there's always somebody who says oh did you know you can do this with it or that's the, there's a better way to do that so do always read the comments because people will point out those little mistakes this is the first time i've used it it's not something i've used before just somebody mentioned in the comments and said hey have you looked at this uh, re uh terrain tool it's well worth looking at so uh, here we are okay so i've created this using walls now as i said now my terrain uh, sorry my region is created if uh, if i don't want those walls because those walls are not actually i don't want them to block sound site movement i can delete the walls i've still got my region so you might see that that's a really easy way to just wall off the area that you need use any walls you like put them in and then you can delete the walls afterwards and you've got your region how you want it um, which is great now we've got our region we can go in and edit it yeah look we've got an extra button up here okay that we don't normally have which is the terrain mapper if i click on here this is where we can say things like right what is this region is this a plateau um, so in other words this bit up the top here when i did that i did it as a plateau this is a flat piece of land that is at a different height from the main map so you could do that and then you can say well what's the elevation of this this is this is 10 foot high now we're doing a river so that's stupid but i can do that update the region and that is now a plateau you can also make it a ramp now, if you make it a ramp, it, you're going to be putting in, well, what's the highest elevation of one end of the ramp and what's the lowest elevation of the other side of the ramp? So we might do it 0 to 10. It's a very gentle slope. And then which direction? Now, I've got a river here, so it doesn't make an awful lot of sense. Um, but you absolutely, you tell it which direction that ramp is going. So I might say it's 90 degrees. Um, so it's going west. 90 degrees is due west. Okay, so you've got which direction that is sloping. So if you want to do a, you know, a, a 20 foot long dirt ramp on your map, you can do that. And as they move up that ramp, it will change their elevation. We, I don't want to do any of that. Not for this. Not for this. Um, I want to go to behaviors and I want to add a new behavior. And under this menu, we've got, uh, we've, there's an elevator. So if we want to make this area and elevator you step on it it changes your elevation immediately up or down um, I want to use set terrain that's what I'm going to use here so this isn't normally in the region controls this is purely because of the uh, this mod terrain mapper so I'm going to go set terrain and now I get this pop up and I can select what kind of terrain and by default it's got cliff which gives you climbing difficult which is your times two movement speed and your water swimming. Now we're making a river, so I want to make that water swimming. I'm going to update that region. Lovely jubbly, easy peasy. And now when Soriman walks here, he's swimming. It's that simple. Really, really easy to use. Now, obviously, I did exactly the same technique, but when I created my bit along the cliff, I just called it cliff. And when I did my bit at the top, as you saw in those options, um, I just made that a, a plateau and I gave it a height of 20 feet. Now, you may absolutely say that for things like the elevation here, when you're doing your walls, you might say, well, hang on a minute. When I do my, my invisible walls or whatever walls you use, you might come in and say, well, hang on a minute. If you're at the top here, you can see down. But if you're at the bottom, you can't see up. Well, you can just leave those walls in place and, of course, you can just set the direction of your wall appropriately. You might say it's not going to restrict any sound. Um, you might say uh, it is going to restrict sight in one direction. Um, is it going to restrict light? No. Is it going to restrict movement? No. So it's only going to restrict sight and in one direction. I guarantee I've got the wrong direction because <laughs> I always do. So if we pop you down over here, sorry man, uh, I think I have indeed got this the wrong way around. Yes, so sorry man can't see down that cliff. So I've got my wall the wrong way around. I mean, that's an easy fix, isn't it? It's always a guess with me that way, that it pointing, you can't see that direction. 
So now if you're at the top of the cliff, you can see anything at the bottom of the cliff. Let's move this boar over. But if Soriman's at the bottom of the cliff, he can't see what's up the top there because of that wall. So if I use that wall to define my plateau at the top, it will mean Soriman cannot see what's up the top there while he's at the bottom. He climbs that cliff, he's now on this area, and in fact I haven't made it a region, but as soon as he's at that same elevation, that's going to do it. So let's do this. Let's finish this off um, so that we've got this working. Come on. Okay, let's not worry about the climbing aspect. You've seen that. You've seen how to do that. So I don't think you need me to patronize you and take you through that again. Okay, so we've got this area. Now, if I select all of these walls, if I'm a genius, will it let me do it? I want to say, I think it was right. No. <laughs> and um, some are going to be some way and some are going to be the other. Yeah, let's switch that one around. Depends on which direction you drew them. That's the uh, that's a slight issue. So now, Soriman can't, no matter where he is, he can't see. Have I done the wrong way around? <laughs> oh, I didn't change. <laughs> Excuse me, being an umpty, I didn't actually change their function, did I? I only changed their direction. So, movement restriction of none, light restriction, none, sight restriction is what I want, you plonker. There we go. Um, bosh. So, now I have got them the wrong way round, or at least some of them. I've got that one the wrong way round. Walls. Me and walls, hey? that way thank you right so now Soriman cannot see anything up that cliff can't see anything up there at all so we can go back to our regions we can say I want to fill a region by within walls click in here just call it top okay and then I can look at terrain mapper and I can say this is a plateau uh, doesn't matter how high I want to make it I'm going to say it's 20 feet okay so we stick that in there job done now Soriman cannot see anything until he's up the top of this cliff and now he can see and he's 20 feet up as soon as he goes down so you might have a ramp that goes up this cliff or something um, but as soon as he's down here he can't see what's up the top there so it's a really nifty little thing I mean I some of you will be using this. Obviously, somebody is because it was their recommendation to do this as a video. Uh, my question would be, are you going to use it? Now, I'm thinking, of course, so much of my energy at the moment, my time that I have, is going into building Curse of Strahd. Um, and I'm thinking, am I going to use this for Curse of Strahd? Um, the answer is going to be no. Uh, and the reason why is because I'm trying to keep the mod count as low as possible for packaging it for other people. Fewer mods the less chances of things going wrong. I'm already having some issues with my my journal uh, not, not, not playing ball um, that I need to sort out. But I think if I wasn't packaging that, there are definitely maps similar to this, um, this kind of map where you have got different elevations that would be really, really cool to have that on. When you're passing through a valley, um, we've got maps where you've got, you know, rope bridges over, you know, over valleys and things like that. Um, notice that we're not using anything like Ripper's levels. We're not using wall height or any of those kind of bits. Now, you 100% can use wall height in conjunction with this. Um, and in fact, one of the recommended modules is using wall height. For this purpose, we don't need it. You've seen what we're using. It does the job. I think it's really cool. And it's really easy to use. As long as you know how to do two walls. <laughs> Shut up. Me and my walls. Um, <laughs> it's really, really simple. You've just seen me do it. You know, you can create water areas and, and everything like that. Now, when we did go in water, this is clearly applying fact actually if I look here we've got a temporary effects of water swimming now if we look at this temporary effect on here because this is probably quite important um, this is related to the area it's going to give us a, a status icon um, 
how long does it last? Well, it only lasts while you're in the area, but look, there is an effect. System attributes, movement, walk, it's going to multiply them by a half. In other words, you're at half speed, your burrow speed, etc. It's going to half all of your speeds. Notice it's not halving your swimming speed because you should be moving at swimming speed. So those are built in um, already. So if you're, I mean, it doesn't matter so much if you're out of combat, but if you're in combat, that is already going to halve your speed, or rather, sorry, it's going to halve all of your speed except your swimming speed, and I would like to think it would it would automatically trigger your swimming speed. So the difficult terrain, or even though the icon wasn't quite, maybe the icon is correct. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but that should trigger, and again, it's going to halve that. In fact, let's uh, let's quickly quickly um, have a look at river, and when we look at set terrain, if I because that we set that to swimming. If we set that to difficult, very quickly, thank you very much. It's not going to take him off of swimming now because we didn't leave the area while it was on. But we now, Sorryman now has this difficult terrain times two. Maybe, yeah, no, maybe that is the correct icon. Maybe that is what they were going for. And if we edit this... Um, we should be able to see under effects this is going to do again. So your walk, move, climb, hover, swim and fly are all reduced by half. So times 0 0.5 which is half. So it's going to halve your speed which is perfect and exactly what you would want it to do. So not only does it say hey you're in difficult terrain. It is actually halving your movement speed which will impact on your actual combat speed. Whether you've got the HUDs open and all of those other bits that you may or may not want. So really cool. Um, and you can see why this has been inspired by Dfred's convenient effects. Because it is apart from giving that notification it is actually applying a uh, well a convenient effect to let you know that that's happening which is really cool now of course i've changed sorryman's river without him leaving it uh, i can just delete that from him if i want to that's no problem and of course if he leaves the rough the difficult terrain that's going to go so yeah really really cool and that should tie in nicely with any other automations and stuff that you've got because it is using um, that convenient effect so i'm going to shut up now um yeah really really nice one let me know if you use this or if you're now going to use it because that happens quite a lot people are going to go i never knew about this i'm definitely using it i think it's really neat it's easy to use easy to set up very effective uh, it's a cool one it's definitely going in my it's going to definitely going to be one that stays installed even if i'm not using it for curse of strad um because i don't want to forget about it Anyway, thank you for watching. Do appreciate it. Leave a like, leave a comment. Take care, subscribe to get more videos and I will see you in the next one.